Okay, so the, uh, the observer. So there's different, there's different ways uh, to relate to the observer and there's different ways that one can by uh, one can language. And I was uh, with uh, uh, someone I think last week and they were saying, uh, when I was saying like letting go of the limits or observing the limits, he didn't work for him. So it's like, you could use the word untether, untether from that which is limited. Mm. Or un untether. Untether is a, it just means like unhooking, like unhooking, uh, untethering or or another one, like today there was someone who liked the word, you know, going past the container, going past the, the containments, mm. you know, but anyway, whatever is in, in form, whatever is a container, whatever is limited, whatever is tethered, there is that which is untethered, there is that which is unhooked, there is that which is not a container, which is beyond containers. So all of these, anything that is contracted, limited, tethered, hooked, there is that which is observing it, which is not hooked. That which observes hooks is not a hook. That which observes containers is not a container. That which observes a limit is not limited. Wow. So, so, we're going, as the Course in Miracles says, we're going beyond form. Form is like a container, a limit, a context, a construct, a tether, a hook. But there is something beyond all of these things which watches or is witnessing or is observing all of these. And the field of observing or witnessing is limitless, it's tetherless, it's untethered, it's unhooked, it's free, it's also out of time. It observes time, so it's timeless. It observes location, so it's locationless. So it's beyond location, beyond time, beyond tethers, beyond hooks, and beyond limits. So here's, um, here's an example. Like, this is, a, this is a battery. So like a cannon battery. So if you see this battery, it's like, it's got its container. It's a limit, it has a size, it has a shape, it's in distance, it's in location. So if you're observing it, you are not it. Mm. And also any object, this is like an object, any object in where there is no interest or no projected meaning or value or there's no strong association with it, then it's observed to be a detached observation. So it's very, very clear you are not the battery. Mm -hmm. When there's detached observation, it's like there's a distance and there's no connection to you. When there is an, an, when there is an attached relationship or where there is already symbolic projections on it, or there's like an emotional hook to it, it becomes almost like it's a part of you, it feels like it's a part of you, because there's not detached observation. So it's unclear that there seems to be a relationship with it. So everyone knows that the battery is not, is not them. They have detached observation. It's an object, it's a limited object, it's not you. And the observer of the object must be bigger than the object. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you can observe also, things which are observed tend to come and go and pass and change, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, one minute the battery is not there, and then something is observing it coming, and now it's there, and then the observer can also notice when it's gone. So the observer is something that's always here, but it can see things coming and going and changing. Mm -hmm. And the observer cannot be that which is uh, which is something that is changing. There must be an observer that does not change, that can see the change. Yeah. Yes? Okay, so that's the first question. So that, then we have to take it, so that's easy, but then what about thoughts? So thoughts, is there something observing thoughts? Because thoughts are coming and going, sometimes they're not there, sometimes there's many of them, mm. and they're changing. 
Is one the thoughts, or is there an observer of thoughts, which is not the thoughts? Also, is there a detached observer of thoughts, which has no relationship to the thoughts? What about memories? Like a picture can come, like a memory can come, and then it can go. You know, you remember when you're five years old, it comes, it's gone, but the observer of that image is, is the observer the image, or is the image coming and going, and the observer watches the image coming and going? Is there a detached observer of images and memories? Is there, is there uh, an observer of feelings? S suddenly there is no fear, and then suddenly there's fear, and the fear is gone. Is there something that observes fear coming and going? Is there something that observes time? Is there something that observes location, like something is here and something is here, or something... Is that which observes location, is that in location or is that locationless? Anything that is an object or that can change or that can pass, is there an observer that watches all changing and passing things but cannot be these things that are coming before it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is like, this is not... Now, here are some of the traps that many people get uh, hooked in. If you try and think about the answer, then you can't be the observer of your thoughts. If you try and make a visualization for the answer, then you're just using your mind to make a visualization of this. So. If you try and think about it, then you're just in thinking. So what is observing thinking? So in order, you can't use your thinking to be the observer of your thinking. So that which observes thinking uh, is that which observes thinking. So if you try and think about it, you'll just be in thinking, not the observer of the thinking. Whenever you use, whenever you say the word I, then I is limited, because I is like, if you're referring to I as the body, well I is limited. If you're referring to I as the thoughts, then I is limited. But what observes I? Is that which observes thinking and body and senses, is that limited? Is that a body? Is that a thought? Is that a picture? Is that a visualization? So, The Course in Miracles talks about letting go of the ego. So if the ego is the I, or the body and the thoughts, then what is observing the I? And is that which is observing, can that pass? Can that die? Was that ever born? Can that ever change? Can that come and go? Is that in time? Is that in location? Can that be in fear? Can that be in guilt? Can that have an obsession? Can that be worried about anything? That which is observing all things that come and go. If the observer has a relationship to that which is observed, is there an observer that's observing that observer which has no relationship to anything that's being observed? Is there an observer which has no interest in anything that is observed? So. These are the things, and these are experiential. These are experiential. Hence, I was talking about if you think about it, it's not experiential, you're just thinking about it. But what obser the observer of thoughts is not a thinking. It's a spiritual experience. Because the watcher of thoughts, when that is experienced, it is known that the observer is not the thoughts. That's an experience. To think I understand it is just the thinking. So whatever it is, the way to do the inquiry is to see, is to ask, is to experience to yourself what is the experience of self now? And whatever the experience of self, like if the experience is it's the body now, or if the experience is it's the thoughts now, then that is the experience of self or the ego self. 
then see if there is an observer to the ego self, which is not the ego self. And this, this is then the process of self-inquiry. Okay, so let's do five minutes of uh, self-inquiry and then uh, we'll have some feedback. Thank you.